You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Under the voice of the You are exalted above the names. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temitayo. I'm a Christian content creator, and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Now, the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and all those videos from 2020. They are all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen. I will encourage you to visit my channel, not only to view the old Open Heavens videos, which are a great story guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly and while you're on my channel very important you know i would encourage you please subscribe you know why not please subscribe even if you see me on facebook please subscribe to my youtube channel like comment and share and the lord bless you as you do now pastor he had the boy led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and pastor gives you a few scriptures from the bible and the memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise god so today is monday february the 5th and i hope you had a lovely weekend um and the title of today's daily devotional is the holy ghost baptism and power part two the holy ghost baptism and power part two so we started the part one yesterday and i was saying yesterday that you see anything that any topic any book that relates to the holy spirit any 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 instruction from the holy spirit the holy spirit is our priority as christians is the Holy Spirit in, you know, and some people ask what is the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is new, new English, and the Holy Ghost is King James, you know, same person. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost baptism and power part two. So you need to watch the part one. It was very, very good, and I know it will bless you exceedingly. Anything, um, anything that relates to the Holy Spirit must become priority to us. Knowing the Holy Spirit is priority because we can't make it as a Christian without the Holy Spirit. Okay, just Christ said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. You know, but he, what he was saying is to disciples then, to, you know, to apostles that I know you have been with me for three and a half years, but I cannot guarantee your success. So wait in Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Spirit. Because without him, we can't do nothing. Moses, and I was saying yesterday that Moses said in um, Exodus chapter 30, 33, that if your presence does not go with us, we will not go up hence, but because how shall the nations know, you know, that the difference between us and all other nations is that your presence is with us. And God said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Okay. So that's what Jesus Christ was saying is that, you know, we should wait for the Holy Ghost without the Holy Spirit. Christianity is like every other faith. But what differentiates Christianity from all the other faiths is that we have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, the Advocate, the Strengthener, and our Standby. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost, <clears throat> Baptism, and Power. And I was saying yesterday that Jesus Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Praise the Lord. So now our scriptural reading is taken from, don't forget to view yesterday's video. You need to, so you can have a holistic understanding of where the Spirit of God is trying to teach us. Acts chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Um, hmm, actually, I wanted to read from the New King James. So let me, let's me let go to the New King James. Acts chapter um, 4, verses 1 to 13. Okay. Now, as they spoke to this new King James, now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadduce Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was rather, it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Enos, the high priest, Cephas, Cephas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, 
said to, to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders and has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Whoa, ho, ho. Uh, God's word is truth and life. His word, Jesus Christ is sweeter, is the sweetest. He's sweeter than the honeycomb, pun in the honeycomb. He's the chief amongst 10,000. He's the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. This is, this is mm, awesome. This is food indeed. You know, Jesus Christ said, my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. And the word of God is meat indeed. It's glorious stuff. So you see, um, you, that's why I said you need to watch yesterday's video. You know, just binge watch it. It's very important that you get this foundation. Everything that relates to the Holy Spirit is priority. So yesterday, Peter and James, they went to the temple at the hour of prayer. And then uh, the man that was had a, a, a bad problem at the beautiful gate was healed. He, he And, you know, Peter said, gold and silver have we not, but such as we have given it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And when the man got up, you know, everybody knows this man. He has always, always at the temple begging. And now the man is walking. People can see this is real life, not film. And the man entered into the temple. And Peter used that opportunity to begin to preach the word of God. And what happened after that was that 5,000 men, apart from women and children, gave their hearts to Christ. Is what the Bible is telling us here. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men, men, came to about 5,000. Usually women and children will be more. And, you know, even when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and Peter addressed the people, 3,000 were saved. But here, 5,000 men were saved. And how many people are in the city? There are 5,000 men and their wives. You can imagine, like, at least 10,000 were saved. So who else is left in the city? So it cost an uproar. You know, because when, when the Lord, uh, um, you know, uh, God is amazing. Oh, people could see this man. Everybody who went to the temple knew this man. And here he is walking and leaping. And Peter said, it is true the name of Jesus. Christ. Peter is saying to them that, you know, uh, he, the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah. You know, he said, if we are being judged, he said to them that this man that you are seeing here today is standing by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead by his name, in his, through his name, does this man stand whole? And he said, this is the stone that you rejected, that God has made the head of the corner. And then he gives us this amazing verse, which everybody should memorize. He says, neither is there salvation in any other. There's no salvation anywhere except through the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name given under heaven amongst men by which we can be saved through the, except through the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No salvation anywhere. And they looked at Peter. They, they, these guys were fishermen. They knew that they were not educated. So how is it that they were so learned? They realized that they had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amazing. Ah, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay, let's, let's go straight into daily, daily devotional. And the memory verse is taken from 2 Timothy verses 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. And it says, For God had not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I have the spirit of power, I have the spirit of love. I have the spirit of a sound mind. I'm powerful, I am loving, and I am mentally sound. Another translation says, I'm self-disciplined. Amen. God did not give me the spirit of fear, but I'm powerful, I'm loving, and I am mentally sound. And that's a great confession. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor says in the Bible reading of today, Peter confronted the Sadducees defending his faith in the name of Jesus Christ. However, was Peter this bold before he was baptized in the Holy Spirit? The simple answer is no. You know, it was this, you know, he was not this bold. Pastor says in Matthew 14, 28 to 32, Peter was described as being afraid after he saw the boisterousness of the wind. And in John 18, 16 to 27, John 18, 16 to 27, when the servants recognized him as one of Jesus' followers, he denied it and swore that he did not know Jesus. And this is the same Peter. This same Peter was now the one confronting the Sadducees. So we know Peter is a very fearful person. You know, he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was just the mercy of the Lord that, you know, um, he, the Bible says he went out and went because he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, before the cross crows, you'd have denied me three times. He said, I will never deny you. I will die for you. But when, you know, push came to shove, he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. And this was the same Peter that when, you know, he was walking on the water, when Jesus Christ, he said, if, if, if it's you, Lord, bid me come. And Jesus Christ said, he, come. And he came out of the boat and he walked on the water. But when he saw the boisterous winds and, you know, the, the waves, he became afraid. So he, he was a fearful man. He had issues with fear, you know. But um, I love the book of James. He says that uh, I mock at fear and I'm not affrighted in the name of Jesus. I mock at fear and I'm not affrighted. That God has clothed my neck with thunder. Praise the Lord. So, but this Peter, he was one that denied Jesus Christ, you know. And here he is now talking to the, not just the Sadducees, the high priests. These are the, the, H, the high class echelon, the cream de la cream, the, the leaders. He was talking to them, you know, because they arrested him and John and put them in prison. Because it was by the time the whole city was in opera, they arrested them. And because it was late, they left them in prison. And then they brought them out to come and face the panel the next day. You know, this was the same people that crucified the Lord Jesus Christ that Peter was talking to. You know, and they, they, these guys, they knew they were fishermen. How was it that they could, they were analyzing things with boldness. The Bible says Peter filled with the spirit. Let's go on. In, so in Acts 4.10, the one who denied Jesus Christ said, the same Jesus you crucified, God has raised him from the dead. And it is through him that this lame man is standing before you all. He added that there is no other name given un unto men by which anybody can be saved or by Jesus. He was now standing solidly behind Jesus Christ. The Peter after Pentecost was different from the Peter before Pentecost. He was now bold and could speak about Jesus Christ to anyone regardless of their status in society. Praise the Lord. Why? Why? What was the change? Pastor is making it clear here that the Peter before Pentecost, the Peter that denied Jesus Christ that time, is not the same Peter that was standing before the Sanhedrin. They had two, they, they, you know, he, something had changed in the Holy Ghost. Remember that Jesus Christ said, tarry in Jerusalem, because Jesus Christ knew that without the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to preach the gospel as effectively as we should. Amen. So, and that's what, that's what made the difference. The, when he received the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit, he became as bold as a lion. The, the, the scripture that says that the righteous are as bold as a lion was fulfilled in his life. You know, and what that means is that, you know, for you to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you have to be, make sure you have laid aside every sin that so easily besets us. Amen. We must receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He spoke with boldness. And he was declaring the whole counsel of God. He was declaring, he was speaking with fire. You know, Jesus Christ said, John the Baptist said, when he's coming, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There's a baptism of the Holy Ghost and there's a baptism of fire. This one is the fire. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, he's, he's talking, declaring, giving them hot, hot. They, they, could not even, they were even afraid of him. You know, and in Acts chapter 4, verse 30, it says that the boldness of Peter and John was beheld by the people around them. In other words, their boldness became very, very, ob very obvious. What was responsible for this kind of boldness? The answer to this question can be found in Acts chapter 4, verse 8. It says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto the filled with the Holy Ghost, then said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. And now we know, we know that, you know, um, so it's not just the apostles or the pastors or the teachers or the evangelists that can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Anyone who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because you can't receive the Holy Spirit except you are born again. Except you accept Jesus Christ first as Lord and Savior. So that's the prerequisite. For you to receive the Holy Spirit, 
you know and that's what simon the sorcerer thought he, when he saw peter and james walking miracles he said oh i will give you money for this power <laughs> peter said your money perish with you okay so the only way you can receive the holy spirit you have to be born again first you have to jesus christ said except a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of, of, of god and except you are born of the water and the spirit you cannot enter so you need to be born again number one and then you are filled with the holy spirit the bible says they believed and were baptized so you have to believe first you have to accept jesus christ as lord and savior you're not a higher link you go through jesus christ the door the way okay without the accepting jesus christ as lord and savior you cannot receive the holy spirit okay so that's the prerequisite and receiving jesus christ as lord and savior it means that you have accepted you, you you've confessed that you are a sinner and you have received the salvation you are washed in the blood your sins are washed away with the blood and you have now become the righteousness of god in christ jesus then you are a recipient you are qualified to be a recipient of the holy spirit and we must understand he was filled with the holy spirit being filled with the holy spirit with the holy ghost is the antidote to fear wonderful if fear has been holding you back from fulfilling your destiny it is because you are not yet filled with the holy ghost when you become filled with the holy spirit you will look at the biggest obstacle in front of you and smile because you know that greater is he that is in you than he greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and that's in first john 4 to 4 4 so the, the the baptism of the holy spirit is the antidote to fear the holy ghost in us the infilling the fire we burn up every shaft including fear with unquenchable fire praise the lord and that's the uh, you know pastor is saying that that's the you know that's the antidote to fear praise the lord praise the lord so the baptism of the holy ghost neutralizes the spirit of fear because god did not give us the spirit of fear when fear tries to creep into your heart start speaking in the holy spirit start speaking in the holy ghost when fear starts to speak tongues to the point when where you are sent above the level of that fear the holy spirit gives you the boldness to surmount any obstacle that may be standing in your path no matter how big it may appear pray in the holy ghost instructions now these are instructions that we must take seriously pray in the holy ghost every day study your bible and have the holy ghost lead you make the holy ghost your companion at all times and fear will become a stranger to you praise the lord now you may say oh will god give me the holy spirit i haven't uh, in some new questions i think oh will god give me the holy spirit um I've, i don't remember some of my sins no no don't worry the blood of jesus christ as long as you have accepted jesus christ as lord and savior the blood of jesus christ washes away your sins all your sins the bible says that we have received the have received the the, the 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 gift of righteousness by which we reign in christ jesus so when we, and pastor is saying that we should pray in the holy ghost every day study our bible and have the holy ghost lead us i remember jesus christ said in mark chapter 16 which we looked at yesterday mark chapter 16 verse 17 to 20 he said these signs will follow those that believe in my name they will cast out devils they will speak with new tongues they will take up serpents if they drink anything that they will not hurt them you know and they will raise the dead and the lord walking with them confirming the words with signs and falling in other words once you believe you understand the holy spirit is in us to help us we, we, to work miracles amen and to give us boldness and he said we should pray in the holy ghost so he has given us power to speak in, new, in in other tongues okay um hmm, i don't want to go into this but the gift the speaking in tongues is different from the gift of tongues okay so but these tongues comes in your these tongues that jesus christ is talking about here is the it comes in your package of salvation we speak with part of as soon as you give your heart to christ you receive power to take up serpents to lay your hands on the sick to speak in new tongues that's tongues the one that builds up your faith it builds up our faith the bible says uh, building up ourselves on our most holy faith praying in the holy ghost so pastor is saying that we should pray in the holy ghost every day we should study our bible every day and that we should be led by the spirit of god as many as are led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god make the holy ghost your companion at all times and reflection is are you constantly filled with the holy spirit Praise the Lord. If men are speaking as they are, they know how to give good gifts to their children. How much more will God give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Ask God for the Holy Spirit the same way you asked God for salvation. 
The same way you ask God to save your soul and he saved your soul. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Before you call him, he has said, and while you are here speaking, he has already performed. The Holy Ghost will fall upon you like fire. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you because your word is yea and amen. Father, it is written that if men as wicked as they are, they know how to give good gifts to their children. How much more will God give the Holy Ghost to those that ask him? Father, for myself and my brothers and my sisters that are listening to me, I ask that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you pour out your Spirit upon us in the name of Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Heavenly Father, I ask that you baptize every one of us with your Holy Ghost and with your fire. In the name of Jesus, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In the name of Jesus, help us to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gives us utterance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Every day, ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And go out there and speak in new tongues and lay your hands on the sick and pray and you know pray for nations pray for pray for you know confront the devil hallelujah in the name of jesus christ of nazareth god bless you my name again is sister temitaya i hope this blessed you while you're on my channel very important whether you're watching me from facebook please subscribe to my youtube channel why not the lord bless you so you can be aware anytime i upload the video God bless you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day and be being filled with the Holy Spirit. God bless you.